Welcome to Flying Lessons. This is a very special little banner. We have a two-piece topper um, so that you get a good shadow box effect so we can have the background and we can have some front stuff and action going. Love it. We've got double slots here. Okay, This hat is its own little beast and I've cut the witch's hat out of the top of the hat. Okay, You can secure it with a drop of tack it over and over. We've got real hair underneath the hat. Okay, not real hair. Um, we have hair, um, fake doll hair. And then we have a double layer banner situation going on here so that when she hangs on your door, you're going to see this, this lace slip that's got glitter on it. We've got her legs sticking out. This witch has been on a flying lesson and she has flat hit a wall. Okay, she's fun, she's whimsical, they're, she's colorful. I honestly think that this would be one of those banners that you would make door size. Um, really big. We've actually made all of the bits into um, different sizes. To cinch it all together and make everything connect, we've got magnets on our bats. And I'm just going to put our super strong magnet on the back there. Okay. And the same thing on this side. Okay. And turn them so we like them. And there we go. We have got our flying lesson project all done. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, seriously, if you um, enjoy whimsy and texture and layers and stuff, this is a project for you. Enjoy. All right, welcome to our new project. Um, this is going to be just a crazy fun thing. We have a triple layer banner. This goes in the top rail. And then this is one long piece that we'll paint on this side and on this side of the banner. So we're going to have a little bit of a kind of a tricky thing get it set up, but I think that you'll dig it when we get it done. So the first thing that I did is I traced all three of the elements on my yellow tracing paper, and then I made sure that they lined up, okay, that our skirt falls where I want it to, and then I left myself some room on the hat. So I left this longer and allowed, even though my fold is here, I'm going to want to hem, and then I can adjust the hat up or down to, um, if, in case there's any kind of weirdness going on with the other banner. So this is my piece that will correct any errors that I make here, but because this is linked on both sides, i got to make sure you get it laid out right. Okay, so I've added it all up and it comes to 51 inches for all of the pieces. Um, the little piece is only 14 inches, so I'm going to cut a piece for the 14 and then a 37 inch piece of rock lawn for this long piece. So you want to keep that one long so that you have the both sides, if that makes sense. All right, I've got it all traced, and I'd like to say that normally I don't, um, I don't go ahead and cut out my banners before I get them done. But in this case, um, because I want to make sure that it's all going to line up, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut everything out and just do my silhouette. And I really like the look of a base coated edge on the rock lawn, so that's another good reason to do this. So. I'm going to use a sharp pair of scissors and cut it out. Okay, I like the rough side of the rock lawn better than the smooth side, and since there's more painting moment on the top layer, or the middle layer, um, I made sure that I have my rough side on that layer. This will be the smooth side, and it's not a big deal, but it's, it's just what it is. I've threaded it through. I'm going to mark where my seam needs to be. So basic, whoops, I'm going to mark it with the gray. On the and anything in that ballpark is going to be just about right. Okay, and then I'll know where to flip it. I guess I'll mark it on the inside as well. Okay, I'm going to test my hat as well. And in the meantime, I'm going to glue the magnets onto the back of my bats. That way they're ready to go. We're going to seal all of our wood with a roller. We're not going to worry about getting into the inside. You can spray that if you're worried about it. If it's going to hang outside, then you probably should do something with it. But I'm just going to give it a light roll. And on the parts where there are the cracks and stuff, I'm going to do both sides too to prevent any warping. So just do light pressure here to prevent it from like leaking into the middle there. And then allow them all to dry. Okay, I did just go ahead and roll right over the top of my uh, letters and stuff, but I think in retrospect it'd probably be smart to, to spray it. And I'm getting ready to do my uh, blue color, and the banner's going to be a little tricky, and I've got my last project's paint on my 
nonstick mail. I'm going to use some water. Squirt it. If you have anything tough ever that you can just let it soak, but because it's nonstick, it doesn't really stick. I just scrape all this stuff up. I've got varnish and everything on here. Okay, scrape it up, wipe it off, because when you get paint on other paint, it reactivates. And so if I end up with my blue paint touching the nonstick mat, which would be fine, I'm going to end up with um, tan paint on my blue paint. So I want to make sure that I am very clean to start with. I'll wipe it all off. Super easy to clean, super easy to maintain. This one has been, I don't know, a couple months that I've had it on here. And I did scrub just a little too hard in one spot. You want to be careful not to dig a hole when you're wiping stuff off. Okay, so I think that's all good. And it's time to get some color on our banner. Okay, we have to make things blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Ultra, Ultra Blue Deep. And we're going to roll one coat of Ultra Blue Deep on this. I'm not going to worry about um, this. I've got sealer in my brush. I'm not worried about that. Make sure you get over your edges. This is a really good argument for the nonstick craft mat, especially Ultra Blue Deep. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll just pick that up and we'll move that someplace else. You can do both sides if you feel like you want to, that's not a problem, but you do have to wait for them to dry. I use my floor a lot when I'm doing this. So now in the meantime, okay, there goes my floor. Okay, now in the meantime I've got this and I don't want it to end up on the back side of whatever I'm painting as well, even though we're doing everything blue. So I'll go ahead and use the water bottle. This is more of a logistical kind of balance thing, so just make sure that you're thinking your way through it and um, you'll be okay. Okay, so now we've got this guy right here, and we know, I think, we knew that we're going to make him all blue or her all blue as well. It's actually coating really well, I'm surprised. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just I don't know where the feet come in or don't go in or whatever, so I'm just going to go ahead and make this blue kind of all over. And we definitely want it blue up the sides because if it's not blue up the sides, then your um, if your banner sways or moves in the wind, then the blue won't show behind the blue and it'll look ugly. So we want to make sure that we have both sides of that done. And on our broom, when we get ready to paint that, um, we want to have that blue behind the broom so I don't have to, like I might base coat it, that's actually probably what I will do, but we don't want there to be places where we have to go patch. Okay. And this, what this will do also is it will get us a little bit heavier feel so we don't have so much slip and slide. Okay, and I'm not going to worry about sliding through yet because right now I don't have anything on the other side and it is going to be blue. And I'm going to go ahead and just finish this with one coat. I probably won't do any more than the one coat, but I'll just get that on there so that I have a continuation. We have to have the blue behind because we're going to do a slip slap technique and if we slip slap with the blue, then it'll lift off and um, it'll be ugly. And then I'll wait for this to dry. And then in the meantime, we go on to our background, which is about dry. Make sure you do it right side up so that your words are going to be right. And I've got a little bit of a raised grain going. It's very common. So I'll go ahead and sand. These little sanding discs are wonderful. I think I've been using the same set of sanding discs for about a year now. Okay. And then we'll get blue on that. And 
and let that dry. Okay, while waiting for my project to dry, I will put my roller head in a plastic bag to keep the roller from drying out. <coughs> if paint, if the air doesn't get to the paint, then the roller won't dry, so that's why you put them in bags. We'll go ahead and take our bats and we will make them black. Give them a base coat, give them a sand, and glue those magnets on the back. I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, we're going to base the bat, uh, the moon, with two coats of cocoa. Get it nice and base coated. I'm going to leave my edges alone unless they bother me. Um, and I'm just going to try not to goop paint and medium into the edges and leave them the burned cut edge. Paint around your letter details. I've got my bat painted in the black. And we're going to re-roll our blue. And while it's wet, we're going to do a little faux finish technique. Can't decide if this bottom is going to be black or not, so I'm just going to go ahead and pretend like it will be blue right now. And if I need to base over it, I will. <coughs> so we're going to pick up a little bit of white and we're going to roll it into our brush and it's going to make a little mix and then we want to kind of create a, a little pathway and I'm going to get into a big oval glaze which are all sitting in water And we'll go ahead and just slip slap to blend. And just keep on kind of doing it. You can pick up just a little bit more with the brush. Don't forget to get close enough so that the letters are, um, the, the overlay covers and blends with what you're doing. <clears throat> Let's take a look. See how we're getting. Okay, it's getting there, but I think it's going to need to be brighter. I don't think my stuff is going to show very well. So let's boost it. Let's boost it. So we're just slip slapping and that's a series of like little X's going every old which way. Okay, it's getting better. I think that we might be able to like that. And now we'll repeat on the um, on the banner. <clears throat> Okay, now my banner, um, I've got a little bit of raised nap. If that happens, you just sand it just like you do the wood. Okay, so we'll roll into our blue. And you can already see what's happening here. Not to worry. Take a look at my pattern. I want to see what I've got planned here. Okay, so it's not going to be very much that shows down there. Okay, so we'll just go in with our um, brush and we'll just go ahead and give it a kind of a moment here. Now up above the hat might be a little bit more of what will show. And don't forget to act like there's going to be something at the edges because that is the part that will show is the edges. just 
slip slap to make it be uniform. Kind of want a night sky kind of look. Okay, I think we'll call that good. Now I have to wash my um, my mat again. This has been a thankful day to have this mat, I'll tell you. Now we'll get out the big banner. <clears throat> okay, now this part is going to be a little bit easier than we think because I don't have to worry about the stuff after the fold. So we know that she comes down to here, and I still have to do this side right here. But for this, I really, I'll go up on the edges, but I won't worry so much about um, about like the middle area and stuff. go ahead and get I think I'll probably will um, base that hammer so I need the broom <clears throat> the white changes this color so much it's really cool the most important thing is to have um, the colors kind of blend at those edges Okay, now she shows quite a bit here through the legs as well. Get out some more colors. I'm going to want a whole bottle of the Ultra Blue Deep for this project. Don't put your don't put your finger down where you want it to stay. That's silly. I'm trying to figure out where to put my fingers. I think I'm going to tape the next part down. Come down. It'll be blue. Okay. All right, and now we will let this dry. After I play a little bit more. Okay, I've got my banner flipped over, and I'm going to take some tape. And I know that this is, I think that it is that part right there. Is that a knee? Ah, that's an elbow. Okay, so I'm going to take down our elbow. I think this is our other elbow. And I'm going to tape down the bottom of her skirt. Okay, because that doesn't need to be doing stuff more. We're worried about this area in here. But I want to get it base coated, and I don't want it to slide around. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way to the edges. 
and when I get close to my edge, instead of rolling, I'm just going to go away to the edge, so that way it keeps it clean over there. Okay, to get our bats glued on, we're going to use some E6000, and I already know kind of where I'm going to put them, so I'm going to put that, that magnet right on that um, the big bat. And then it doesn't matter which way you put them because you just flip the magnet over for the different polarity. Get that on there and then let it dry nice and good. All right, we need to get some tacket on the back of our stencil. This is tacket over and over. And what this does is it makes our stencils into a big giant post-it note. So we're gonna use a jumbo dauber and we wanna do this kind of thin because we want the we don't want a bunch of bubbles making the edges waverly. And we just put it around the stencils where we want them to stick. I'll go ahead and do them all. And you don't want it clumped anywhere. This will be repositionable over and over again. So, um, you know, you can use it and use it and use it. Um, let's see what else. And you can wash your stencils and it'll still stay sticky, which is also kind of cool. Um, it'll be not sticky when you wash it, but then it'll be sticky once it dries. And we just let this dry until it's clear. And then they'll be tacky and sticky and a big giant post-it note. Okay, we're gonna do some dry brushing, dry rubbing. Dry brushing is where you leave dry scratchy paint and dry brushing, or dry rubbing is where you leave like scumbly rouged paint. Okay, so you should have basically one set of um, one set of base coats on, and that way we can go through all of our um, background stuff. So now our hat is still going to go over this area right here. But what I need to do is I need to hit these areas where, um, where stuff is going to show. So what I'm going to do is use desert turquoise, and I'm going to go right through all of the base coated elements. and just kind of brighten up that background. The background's just a little bit dark, and we don't like that. Okay, so we'll take our desert turquoise, <clears throat> and we're just gonna sneak this around, kind of in a lot of places. And we're gonna go off our edge, don't worry about that edge. Um, you, do, you could leave it a little bit like the dark blue on the edge for shading, like framing. But we really want to kind of change the look of this background. Okay, so we'll just do one piece at a time. I've got this folded over, and then I'll do it through the, um, I'll lift the skirt up and then do the, the back part. All right, now I've got this flipped open, and we'll just do it's more between where her legs are in this case. And this will kind of even out some of your slip slapping as well. Switch to a Bahama Blue, and we'll increase this just a little bit, and we'll do a dirty brush, so we'll just dip that puppy right in there. Really scumble out the paint. This is probably going to be a little bit wet, so I'll use very light pressure. Yeah, that's very wet. Very light pressure. Gonna kind of tell a little story as we're building this highlight a little bit. So we want to kind of have the like be a little bit of a trail to follow. So we can't have light everywhere. So we pull that back down, and then we'll end up pulling this magic dust trail through and over her skirt and stuff as well. Maybe 
through her arms and around. Okay, so it's starting to tell a little story. It's starting to move. And give it just a little bit of a scumble here, even though that's not our story. We're just going to get just a little bit of scumbles on either side of the hat, so we move that aside. Just really changes this blue from a kind of a screaming Mimi blue to a oh yeah, some fun stuff is happening there blue. Oh, we got to remember our topper. Okay, so. going to cast a glow so maybe we'll bring this down let's see we go this is okay so part of the design process is making decisions and sometimes I'm the worst decision make it maker ever so I'm going to look at this hole and I see that I've got my magic dust coming along it's kind of here winding around coming over so I think I'll have it come out of here and come down to her hand so kitty corner from the bats So then we'll just come down here with that. Maybe build it just a little bit more. So this is just kind of not very interesting looking so far. So we might go ahead and just scumble a lot with this color and create a much more kind of movement. Okay, now fold our paper towel back over. This is a paper towel intensive project or technique. Okay, now I'm in my Bahama Blue and now is our magic dust moment. Kind of like the bat is almost kind of like leaving a vapor trail. Lay that back over the top. See, that's much nicer. And I think I want it to come up from here. Okay, that gives us something to look at. I'll go back into desert turquoise and Give us some scumbles out here. Now remember that this um, piece with the overlay could easily be just a standing surface, so you don't have to necessarily um, you don't necessarily have to be painting this to paint it as a banner. Okay, I'm going to pop my brush in some water, and the next thing we're going to do is spatter. So we're going to get an oval rake brush. And we're going to add water, get you on camera, add water to our um, desert turquoise and really kind of splay that brush out. Okay, we always want to test off on our palette to get rid of the big chunky, oops, to get rid of the big chunky stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to anchor our brush I spattered off too much. Okay, I need a heavier handle brush. If you don't have a really heavy handle brush, then you're not going to get a very nice technique. Okay, and then I'll go into um, Bahama Blue. Okay, and then this, I'm going to anchor it to get very isolated spatters. That's going to give me a little bit of a magic dust. It won't be like snow and it won't go all over the place. Okay, so that's looking kind of 
dreamy and magical. And I think we can go into a little bit, let's go into black <clears throat> for some depth. Mix water with it. More water than that. If they don't, if you have very dry, not falling off your brush spatters, then you are too dry. Okay, so we'll do around the perimeter. Notice I'm facing my brush in the direction of the edge so that that way I don't have spatters inside so much necessarily. <clears throat> And I think we could probably go with a little bit of white plus the Bahama Blue. And let's do that one more time. over the top so we start getting the effect that we're looking for and let this dry because the um, spatters take a long time to dry okay we're gonna repeat in the same the same technique first with desert turquoise just kind of across the top of that then with Bahama blue And Bahama Blue plus white. Then we lay this someplace to dry. And we repeat the process. careful because everything around where you're spattering is going to get spattered when you do spatters. So protect painted surfaces and things like that. Okay, now I've been making this snow just a little bit more than we talked about. However, now it's going to be time to give some isolation. And you get the isolation by anchoring. You get snow by using it freehand. dreamy and magical looking. All right, we'll let the whole thing dry. Okay, so as I'm looking at my pieces here, every now and again I'll get a little piece that wants to curl up. Okay, so what I always do is I just kind of put my hand on it and warm it up, and then I kind of just curl it back under as I see it or as I paint it, and for whatever reason it ends up staying pretty much completely flat. If you need a bigger gun or you've got cold hands, then go ahead and heat it with a blow dryer and you might put it face down so that it can um, just form flat. Okay, but you shouldn't have any problem. Once you get varnish on this, the weight of that should help keep it everything nice and flat and stuff. But that's, if you get little bits that do curl, I just kind of form them and squish them under. Okay, we're gonna start on our broom, um, and we don't have to do too high up on our broom because we're gonna cover a lot of it up. But if you wanna finish your broom, you can feel free to go all the way up there. And then, you know, if you wanted to, and I'll probably talk about this in the front of the video, but if you wanted not to have the, the details and the, 
the stuff under you could certainly paint this on a single um, a single banner just all inclusive kind of thing all right we're gonna go on our let's see if we can get a little closer in get this here for you I'm gonna go in to milk chocolate and water and we're going to do our broom going to use a jiggity jaggedy kind of little hand movement don't don't make everything be the same don't make anything line up okay so we're going to come out and make things be broomy I go right through our leg always go through the things so um, I'd really like to have everybody really think about um, painting from your background first because then you can make it be a more natural painting because you don't have to worry about um, what things are in front of what things. get some of this down into the different areas. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and let that dry. I'll hit it with the blow dryer. Okay, we're going to go here and there behind the bristles with lamp black. Okay, and we'll get this a uh, nice tuck down there. And just kind of go next to some of the bristles to increase the look of that they have things laying in front of them and stuff like that. Not everywhere. You can use the chisel of your brush. Just kind of to show the deeply darkness of the of the broom. Here and there. I'm just using the chisel edge of my brush right now. Shade the edges right there. Okay, I think that's probably enough. Okay, now we'll take some honey brown that is not, um, not with water. And I'm going to splay out my brush and kind of do a little bit of a dry brush kind of highlight kind of thing. And we can't do it like that. I just did like a little bit of skipping around right there. Kind of got to decide on uh, an area of center of interest. I think the next step will do that. So we highlight a little bit more in some places. And then some things come across others, so we need to be wary of that too. Everything can't, you know, run through everything else. brighter things with the, the brown, the honey brown. Okay, now I'll go back and just a little bit more honey brown. off to the edge of everything and then we'll go into marigold this does a couple of things down here this brings our yellow from the moon up down into this carries through the buckles and stuff like that and then 
it also gives us just another color down here that a lot this is to just carry the color so I'm going to make this other side over here this um, in between side be her center of interest so it's not all completely the same just a little bit a hint of that color over here just for depth and maybe one more time for a couple of really bright roomy looking things I think we'll probably go ahead and glaze. Get a big, well, maybe, maybe we won't. I can't decide. I'll decide later. We're going to dry rub the handle with cocoa. Straight up the middle there. And we want to get that off the other ledge. So I want to, I want to, want to, want to, want to cant this just a little bit. And that's because if you dry rub over something like that, then you'll pick up whatever was underneath, like almost like an embossing situation. So we don't want that. <clears throat> and I think I need one more lighter thing. So I'm going to put a little bit of cocoa plus um, maybe a golden straw. And I'm going to just scratch it up. Maybe just golden straw. Let's give ourselves just a little bit more dry look. <clears throat> and we're going to shade with bittersweet chocolate. So we'll go up either side for form and roundness. Bittersweet chocolate is an interesting color. I have ignored it for many, many years, but I think I really, really like it. It's not, um, it's not too red. I think that's what I really like about it. <clears throat> and you're not going to be able to see this, so... Okay, I'm going to take my dagger striper, which I put a little bit of thin paint, and I'm going to just run it along it makes really awesome like wood grain. I'm way back, see how it's cut? I'm way back on the um, back edge there. All right, now we have some little wood grains for our broom handle. I think maybe we might want that darker still. So just a little bit of black in. Better your project. Okay, I think that's good. All right, we're gonna get her little crunched up hand here painted. We've got olive green. <clears throat> we're gonna highlight. Oops, a little drier. Just gonna rub that down. The pads of our hands. She's just going to have a kind of clawish little thing going on here. One thing about painting, sometimes when you're painting things like monsters and things for Halloween, you find yourself painting the strangest, strangest things, like crunched witch's hands. Just a little bit too clawed up, I think. Too many. Too many chopped up things. 
Okay, then we'll switch to the other guy. And this one's a little bit more straightforward. Once again, I don't want to make creases, so I'll just switch the angle of. Get a nice roundy cupped hand highlight. that just a little bit um, for strength and for smoothing. Okay, I'll come back down to the claw. And it's kind of a mess. Let's, let's see. I'll be shaded. Let's go ahead and unify things just a teeny bit. Okay. Then we'll take our short, bright brush and we will float. Okay, we've got evergreen, and we're going to use our short bright, and we're going to shade to get underneath um, where her wrist comes out of her clothes, and we'll walk that with kind of rounded strokes, which is super easy to do with the with the short bright brush. Okay, then. We'll come down here and shade the base of her fingertips. They're jointed. And we're bending in and shade on this side of her thumb. shade the fingers. And just, there we go, that's looking a little less weird. shaded and then we'll do the top hand you can always redo the um, the nails and the nails helped me define the hand so I went ahead and based them in just so I could see what I was looking at each side and then the hands will be pretty much done. All right, I'm rebasing um, on the skirt and what I have found and the reason I almost always roll on my base coats is the um, the canvas that is and it's all canvases don't really like to be brush base coated especially in big areas and so what I'm reminded of is that they make base coating brushes for canvas that are short and bristly. So I got out my crescent 
and I'm able to base coat without laying paint on there so heavily. And it makes a big difference. And I think that's also another reason why people do get some curling when they're doing their banners is they've got way too much paint sitting in puddles because they haven't spread it out. So this way I'm just kind of scumbling the paint into the surface and it bases really fast and it's a big slip slappy moment but it really gets it down in there and it spreads the paint out. It works really good. Remember if you're making a mess now is when we have things finished on both sides. I have a piece of tracing paper underneath the other side as I flipped it out. Um, that way if I lay it down on, a, on the table where it's wet or anything like that, um, it won't get affected. So do make sure you're protecting both sides while you're trying to paint them both. Or just make sure that you do all one side and all the other, whichever way you want to work that. Okay, so I'll just get all this rebased and get it dry. All right, we're going to do the legs the same way as the hands. I'm going to use a bigger brush and we're just going to dry rub straight down the center. Give her some form. I think we'll go ahead and repeat one more time. Just to kind of smooth everything out. And so see, we're doing the thing behind, so that way we can get on top of our boots, which are over the thing that we're doing right now, so I don't have to worry about going around. I can actually sink them right on in there. Okay, then we'll go ahead and shade. And I'm probably going to need a bigger brush. All right, we've got evergreen. Brush off your bristles. Reload if you need to. I'm just going to shade both sides of the legs. All right, we're going to do our little black stripes with um, dry rubbed um, zinc. And we're going to try really hard not to get this. If I need to mask, I can always mask with that, but I'm going to try to get close without making a mess. Okay. This is just going to add the roundness and the form to the stocking or to the leg. So we always do a color that you can't really, really, really see and then follow it with another color. That way we're not leaping too far across the colors. If you leap too far too fast, then the colors will sit on top and look very chalky. Okay, we're going to go into light French blue, and as long as that's dry, and we'll scumble across there and just repeat.
All right, next we will shade with lamp black. And we'll just go up both sides of the stockings. Being careful not to go through our green area. Okay, I'm not certain I'm getting enough roundness on my legs, so I'm going to go with a little bit of black green to increase the roundness. And I think I like that much better. It matches the black a little bit better. Okay, and while we've got our black green on our brush, let's go over to here at the hand. And let's increase some of the shadows for the hands. I think that'll make that look a little bit deeper and better. All right, we're going to take the Glamour Dust Glitter Paints, which is paint suspended in a semi-tinted color. And it's a little bit kind of varnishy. You could varnish this first. I'm going to show you this step now, and you can decide if you want to do it after you varnish or before. This will cover right over, but it won't um, get rid of any of your base coats. And it adds just the most awesome little shimmer, and it adds a glitter that won't come off. And so I'm going to do the black ice <clears throat> on the gray, and I'm going to do the green uh, limelight on the green stripes. Okay, you know what's really cool is I can totally see this glittery stocking. <clears throat> we're going to take graphite and we're going to highlight the shoes. The black is basically our shadow, so we're going to have to create a pretty deep looking um, highlight, meaning that we carry it across really well. <clears throat> Shape following when you're doing this so that you get form. Okay, and we'll be brightening it up as well. somewhere. I'm going to switch to my ghost writer and figure out where that goes. This is a ceramic lead in a pencil that erases with spit water varnish um, eraser, anything like that. So it is really good for painting projects because you can get it off of it. Get it off the surface, you know what I mean. Okay, then I'll, let's see, we'll get just a little bit of this highlight underneath. Then we'll go into the light French blue. <coughs> and then we'll keep this highlight within that highlight. So it gets just higher and higher. And adds shape and form. highlight and I'm gonna go one more time with less paint and um, more paint and do a stronger highlight see how much bolder that is Okay, I think, I think, I think, I think I'm going to repeat on the shoe. 
Alright, we're going to use Honey Brown to dry rub on our buckles. And we'll repeat with Marigold. And I'm almost doing dry brushing instead of dry rubbing. I'm just kind of giving them a little scratchily scumble. When you get into some of the smaller details, you can kind of do a little bit more shortcut type stuff. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and increase the highlights on the shoes just a little bit more with light French blue and a little touch of white. Okay, for her slip, I'm going to take the black ice and a dome brush, and I'm going to stipple over the bottom of the lace. And that's going to add some of this glitter to this. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to, we don't want it so big that it, I'm doing it on the paper towel so I don't clog it up. And then we've got this lovely um, gunmetal color glitter that I'm also going to sprinkle over the top of it while it's wet. And then I'll tap that all off. And hang on. Okay, and so that's what we've got is we've got a lovely kind of almost iridescent pearly kind of looking glitter. And I'll just finish that. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of our Desert Turquoise highlights. And this is just going to be like finishing kind of stuffs. So to divide things just a little bit. So we'll go where things are dividing. I want to kind of create a fabric-y kind of effect on the little Miss Witchy Poo here. I'm going to go in with a dome brush and I'm going to use this sticky mesh, which is magical stuff. And I'm just going to scumble across her skirt. I'm going to change my directions so that they don't line up. Kind of just giving her a little bit of a weave and, and maybe coarseness. Remember that you have layers here, okay? Do not go over your layer. Matter of fact, maybe now is a good time to listen to what I'm saying and just protect myself with a little bit of tracing paper. <clears throat> I'm notorious for not doing what I say. So some are gonna be brighter. And some are not. Okay, I, I like that. That really just adds a little bit of texture. Okay, and we'll do the same thing to her sleeves and to her shirt where it pops through here. to the side. That'll stay and last for quite a bit of, quite a bit, quite a bit of uses. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, she looks a little bit like a cowgirl right now. 
She won't when we get done though. Okay, we're gonna take some stars. I'm gonna wipe my brush out really good and I think I'm gonna take honey brown. And we'll just stipple. Let's see how that looks. I'm gonna hold my the jury out here. line up here with these stars, so I'm not going to use them all in a row. So. Notice I'm not really, 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 really trying to base coat with this. I'm just kind of getting sort of close to it. Yeah, get her some stars going. We'll do a little bit on her sleeves as well. Okay, and then with really sheer floats, we're going to use milk chocolate, and we want to really sheerify this. So don't don't have it be too strong, or it's going to look really strange. And we want to really have that come up and be big and big and soft. Just bring it up like a couple of the points, and then across. Since you, I didn't know if I would like this or not, and you have the advantage of having a video, what you could do is you could totally um, do this with the stencil in place. Just be careful not to get too strong. Okay, so we'll just do that to all of our little clothing stars. Okay, I've got that all done, so I'll flip myself over, and now we'll do the opposite side with some marigold. No, try to keep your lines straight because they're supposed to be stars. Oops. And your floats wet. It's much nicer if you are doing those two things. Okay, we're going to go through and we're going to do a little bit of grape juice here and there. It's just giving us a little bit more pattern and color. Okay, now the fun part, we get to shade. time to go clean out the brush basin. Okay, so we're going to shade with grape juice and a big fat loader brush. It isn't wet enough. Okay, and this is definitely going to be where I want to ditch that. Cracks 
here where her waist comes in. Once again, we don't have the belt on because it's on top of the dress. to have some folds so let's engineer in some folds take that and just kind of crease in that's uh, a little bit too strong And then we'll have to shade underneath. Things. Walk out your floats just a little bit. Okay, she's starting to take a little bit of warm. So once again, our hair is on top of our stuff so we don't have to worry about getting messy there. I think we ought to go ahead and highlight the skirt with the lilac. It's getting a little tricky because I can't just flip this puppy around. Doomed to need that I like that. Okay, so we'll just increase the, the highlight. Okay, that's gonna be cool. Her outer elbow will get this almost fishnet stocking looking kind of funny. Over here, this really looks like tights or whatever. Maybe a little stronger on the elbows. And I think we might go down and do one more time down here. And then we've got to go in, I think we'll do dry brush, and so we'll do Patty's favorite dry brush, like a number 12, and we'll load it with lots of juicy paint. Look on our paper towel, and then let's go highlight the highs and the lows of the fabric. skirt. And we'll get a little, yeah, flick on your paper towel. We're going to take some dioxazine and we're going to deepen our shading. Almost blazish. 
I'm working with my brush way too dry right now. Okay, I'll we'll bring in the waste. And I have to come across underneath the, the band, the belt. Let's just go ahead and glaze that all the way down. go back through and just beef up my yellow stars a little bit more. Bring them back up just a bit. A little dry brush action. Okay, her bracelet is base coated with um, coke with honey brown, and we're going to shade with milk chocolate. We'll just keep it kind of simple, just to pop a color over there. And then we'll highlight with the dry brush of cocoa and marigold. I think that should do it. Okay, the hair is going to get shaded with desert turquoise. Okay, so we're just going to do some, like, just swirly bits there. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to blend the hair with the background. So that is going to be our challenge because there's a lot of that desert turquoise in our background. And since I'm going to lay hair over the top of it, we don't want to make it too detailed and structured. We just want to have some stuff there. kind of some ragged muffin okay so that gives her some witchy do let that dry and we'll see what we think all right I went ahead and did a little experiment I sprayed the hair that I'm going to stick on her with some tacky spray. So it's a tacket, clear tacky spray, um, and I sprinkled it as soon as I sprayed it with the glitter that I used on her slip. And I think that's going to be just awesome, but I don't like the teal underneath with that gray glitter. So I'm going to go back over and just kind of gray up my highlights just a little bit. So I'm not quite so blue. And maybe I want to go into light French blue. And it's just a little bit too really 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 cool so I think what I'll do is I will spray this after I get done 
putting the glitter and everything on and it's dry, I'll spray it with like a regular like matte varnish to get rid of some of the sticky um, from it because it's just a little tacky where the glitter is adhering. But I love the glitter on there so much I'm willing to, I'm willing to go with that. All right, let's get in a little bit closer. Do some magic with the belt. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a C stroke. We're going to weave our little belt together. Oops. Be careful about bending all your edges here. Normally I like to do the um, cutting at the end of the project. Okay, and then we'll do the next row. And then we'll go ahead and do down the belt. Do hit keys. <clears throat> and I'll give it some other little do hit keys. And then let's try, I don't know if this is going to be the right color or not. Let's just go down the middle of each of these dudes with a little bit of marigold. I think I'm going to have to go tighten those puppies up. Okay, and then we'll give it a couple of these dudes. I need some water. Then we'll go in with our asphaltum or the bittersweet chocolate. That's what. little dude of the okay. so I can get on there here okay so I'll go over here and I'll just shade kind of lumpy shading to indicate where the stuff is woven We'll repeat in the middle, same thing, just overlapping as needed. It's a fairly dry float. All right, we're going to take some cocoa, and then we will just kind of increase the weave, kind of covering stuff up, but I think the layers is what makes it cool. A 
and then we're going to dry our brush off with the cocoa and we're just going to go through the middle of the rope with the dry brush can go back into the middle and just give that middle section a little bit of light. And we'll go over to our ends and we will shade them with the bittersweet chocolate. Okay, I'm going to shade underneath this belt with a mix of soft black and um, dioxazine purple. And we can take a little bit oops, of that. You can round out the corners of her dress and deepen some shading. Okay, and then I think we can do the same for above. There, we'll just darken that. And the same things underneath her. Just go ahead and deepen everything just a titch. Highlight the bracelet with the dry brush of the Coco. Yeah, Coco, is that right? Yeah, Coco. And then go Marigold, except for I'm going to wipe my brush out and get fresher Marigold. Okay. And we can give this broom handle just a little kiss of the Marigold as well, just to keep that family going because we have quite a bit of it going on the, on the palette. Okay, we're going into black green and we want to deepen where her fingers and her hand disappears next to stuff. She's all crumpled here. All right, we're going to take her hat band and we're going to highlight with cocoa. And I just kind of slip slapped it on with a mix of the milk chocolate and the honey brown. And so now let's give it a lovely highlight where it would be highlightiest.
Okay, my color's not showing up very well, so I'm going to switch on over into um, Marigold. Let's see if we can't get some action going there. And we can take our color and dry it off a little bit and do a little bit of cross hatching. Okay, then we go into our float of. Let's go ahead and float with milk chocolate first. Okay, and let's see. So we'll just go ahead and float to the inside. <clears throat> and then we'll float underneath as well. I'll blow dry. Okay, and then we'll take our bittersweet and a big angle shader, and we want that to just tuck back and disappear around the corner. So I'll just go ahead and do a walking float. Okay, and that just gives us that tucked back kind of look. Do the same thing over here. down and then kind of almost a series of C strokes. Okay, and that gives us that little bit of dimension. And then I think we'll have just a little bit here and there. Same thing underneath. Not taking up as much room as the milk chocolate did. All right, we want to give a little bit of highlight and de definition to our hat. So I've got a big old dome brush. Let's go ahead and do shape following. So it's like a little C. And then it'll change directions as it goes up the hat. And we'll go again. Strengthening and make sure you're leaving some nice scratches to give the shape. Okay, and I think we can go out to the outer edges. I'm gonna dry that up a little bit more. And we'll 
we'll go one more time with the same color. And this time we're going to make it be stronger and more concentrated and more in the middle of what we've done before. Leading the eye with the movement. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Okay, we can have a couple of crosshatchy kind of movements inside the hat. We'll go into the whatever color lilac that is. And we'll repeat. Okay. We'll shade with our big old angle shader using dioxazine purple. create a, like a different levels of color. Like this is a dusty kind of looking hat, but then when you put the purple on it, it richens it up a little bit. And then we also need to shade on both sides of the point of the hat. in and then repeat on the opposite side. Okay we added some green stripes and I'm going to take my olive green and I'm going to highlight with a dry brush. Maybe I won't go quite so strong back there. And we'll go into Evergreen, if I can find it. Okay, and Evergreen gets to just shade all those guys down. And I think that was black green. It was. Well, black green will follow, so it'll be okay. And then we'll repeat on the other side. Okay, and then we'll repeat with just a little touch of black green. All right, we're going to stipple on some stars with honey brown. Keep them on. like obvious but I mean keep them on the the going upward part of the hat the cone there, there's nothing more lovely than a star stencil because stars are such a pain in the butt to base coat Okay, I don't want to remove it, but I do want to peek and see how that's looking. Looks pretty darn good, so I'm going to go into some marigold. And then I'm going to do one side with marigold. that out and we'll go into the milk chocolate and we'll do the other side with the milk chocolate. Okay. 
Let's take a look. Ooh, that one got a little stripey. I'll just blot that out and we'll just take care of it. And that looks cool. How quick was that to do some stars? We need one more little guy up here at the top. Okay, we're trying to make the cone of the hat look a little bit deeper. We're going to go into soft black and we are going to make this look like it is conier. the other side. And I think I want a little bit more dioxazine loaded here and there. So I'll just come out from the edge and bring that in. Same thing over here. And we gotta bring that down here so that this band looks like it's coming up out of there. <clears throat> and into soft black plus diox. And then let's just bring that underneath there. I'm using the chisel edge of my brush and just kind of sliding. Okay, and then let's get this all dark back here. Where things would disappear. And we'll walk away. Okay, and I think we need our sticky mesh again. brush and let's go ahead and go into some diox maybe a little bit of black plum maybe even some lighter color like the um, orchid or the wild orchid. To our bright color up the middle. Okay, I'm going to use soft heather and I'm going to increase the highlight on the hat up through the middle section. I just want it just a little bit more front and center. just a little bit more jazz. Some. Okay, and I don't think I want, do I want more? Let's take a look. I don't want this color to steal any thunder from the center section, but I don't know that just a little bit's not okay. 
And then I want to try a little bit of the Lemon Drop Glamour Dust Paint over my stars. Over my stars and garters here. Let's see what happens if we do this. Because these colors are so transparent, it should pick up everything below it and just give it just a little pop. Besides also the, the glitter. So yeah, see how that doesn't even cover anything up. But that glitter is right where I want it. I like it. Okay, and I think while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and do the yellow and the green as well. Yeah, I really dig these Glamour Dust paints, especially when we're doing something so silly like Christmas and and decorations for Halloween or you know Easter and stuff like that is just so much fun to to jazz things up. Mm. So that should get pretty dark back over here, and then we'll just do the green on the green. All right, after letting this dry overnight, I thought I would share. This is what's on my palette, and I don't know if you can see how sparkly it is. This is the dried. Um, yellow. Let's see which lemon drop. So anyway, yeah, so it's sparkly. Love the sparkles. I decided to go ahead and err on the side of sparkle caution and the sparkle everything, which I know totally doesn't make sense, but I'm going to go ahead and sparkle all my stars. So if you want sparkly stars, and if you haven't already done it and you're not working along beside, then um, go ahead and do it after you do the two colors in your stencil. Um, unless you're worried about doing them before or after you varnish, and I'll let you decide that. Everybody has their own opinions, and everybody's right. Okay, so just a little bit. I don't want to like take time to like really, 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 oops, like really, really put sparkles on it. Um, but I just want there to be that little bit of something going on down here. This is a big body of stuff. And I really like that the sparkles kind of walk up the witch. We don't go from like just sparkly stockings to the top, you know. You could if you wanted to do a little bit of purple sparkles um, in the skirt. I don't know if that would be overkill or not. Okay, on that note, I'm going to um, go ahead and finish up here and then let it dry. Okay, so we're going to use cocoa, a great big dome brush, and we're going to create the glow behind the moon. Yeah, let's get you better on camera. I think something is messed up with my settings up here. Okay, so big sweeping motion. And it wouldn't be the same because we're not saying that the whole thing is. Okay, so I think we need more. Gentle pressure. Okay, let's we'll see what it looks like. And then we go into some golden straw. I think golden straw is going to be a little bit too. Let's try a little bit of marigold.
we'll continue with a little bit more of the marigold. And you'll notice that the more you get on there, the more solid it'll look instead of looking, um, you know, not very glowy, it'll start getting glowier. And then if you have a spot that's just not taking the paint, stipple it just a little bit instead of rubbing, and that seems to work. Kind of forces its hand. Okay, and then finally we're going into cadmium yellow light. No, just cadmium yellow. <clears throat> doing. Okay, it's got a little bit of a glow. And then we'll work on our moon. So we've got this base coated with um, yellow golden straw. We'll go into mustard seed. Which is going to look basically just like it already does. And then we'll go into the cad yellow. And I think we'll go into cad yellow plus a little bit of white. More with just the white. I like the idea of bringing that up. Okay, now I think we're good there. All right, I'm going to take my black glass stain and I'm just going to go right along the edge, kind of create a little border barrier for it. I don't know why that works, but it'll just cup the edge. Maybe because it's drying from the outside in, I don't know. Okay, and you want to be a little bit careful about holding on to this darn thing. Oops, down the edge. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and just kind of fill it in flatly. Popping any bubbles as you see them. You can use a straw. I need another magnet for this thing to stick to. I think I'll do that for the next one. Okay, well you get the idea. And then make sure you give it plenty of drying time. Okay, after that gets just a little bit sticky, sprinkle glitter all over it. You're going to have a beautiful glassy glittery bat. And don't knock anything off of it until you get all done, like until it's dry. Just leave it on the paper. Okay, we are going to put some desert, nope, Bahama blue stars in our sky. And we're going to pick up 
up some white plus our Bahama blue. And we're going to do some of a little bit of each. Actually, maybe more to the white side. Let's see what that's looking like. Okay, so far they all line up with every one of my letters. That's good. going on. I like it. And I think we can go down, um, down, 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 down. Let's see. Go with a little bit of Bahama plus a little bit of the white. I think we can get a couple of little star moments going on down here. those right there underneath. Okay, we'll go ahead and repeat that. Let's see if I got you on the side. Down where we can see that we've got um, stuff going on. Okay, a little cluster of them going here. on her other side. Okay, and then we'll go up by her hands. Same thing. Let me just make magical star night stuff happen. adds a little bit more stuff. We're still going to do some dreamy background stuff. I've got to add a couple up here on our hat. I can't remember how much of the hat's going to show, but... Okay. I think that's probably enough star love going around. Okay, we're going to take some milk chocolate and our big old fat flat brush and we're going to get this off of this and we're going to shade the other side of the moon far side of the moon and look at that just settle right on down isn't that funny how that just that little bit of color makes everything different that dry and I think I have to do a little bit more. Okay, so I've decided that what I want to do for the letters is I'm going to start at the lower part and I'm going to from the upper down, so about the middle, up to the top of the letters, I'm going to do that textured effect. Okay. 
like having this uniform texture. That's kind of neat. Okay, and I'm using lilac paint. So then, while I'm here, I'm going to pick up the soft heather, neutralize it, and then pick it up again. And then just bring that up at the very tops of the letters, just to brighten that very top bit up. I'll be just a little bit different. Okay. And then we're going to take our um, big fat flat. And we're going to take what color? I don't know about diox. Let's go for juice. Oh, maybe we do need diox. <clears throat> okay, so I'll start with diox and see how it goes. <clears throat> I'll turn it all sideways and then what I'm going to do is keep it off my moon. It's going to float up the letter. Just walk that up. <clears throat> Pardon my. Okay, and I think we might even deepen that one more after this. Down here on the L, keep it real careful. Last one. This is one of those times where I feel like I can keep showing, but um, sometimes it's like a little bit boring. Okay, we're going to go into soft black after we throw all of our paints on the floor. And we're going to mix, and we're going to do that soft black plus diox mix. And we'll just snag the very bottoms after I pull the hairs off. just a little bit more of an anchor.
so we're going to put a little blaze of red violet on the far side of the moon here. We're going to make it bottom heavy. I'm going to get out my mop. Always, always, always when you're working big have a mop handy. It is a, a necessary brush that you don't need all the time, but you definitely need it when you need it, when you needs it. I'm going to come over there and to the side, and we're going to give this a little kiss of red violet here and a little bit on edges of our blue. Okay, same thing over here. And we'll go into see where we like we like that. Okay, I think I'm gonna wait to do the glazes of the red violet on the blue until I do my sparkly dust. Okay, this is where things get a little bit crazy. So okay, I'm gonna start walking all of our dreamy our dreamy stuff down. We're gonna start with the um, Bahama blue. And we've already started it in this area, but now we're going to make everything kind of jive. I want to just kind of snake a magic trail of stuff through our night sky. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, now we'll go into white. And it's dirty brush, so that means it'll just show up as um, it'll show up as a lighter color of the Bahama blue. And a little bit more white, a little bit drier, a little bit scumblier. Okay, and then over where we're coming out onto the blue, I'm gonna be a little bit darker. keep checking. Now we've snaked out over there, but we need to snake up over here is what needs to happen. Okay, then we go into the lighter. Okay, we could actually make that even wider. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll go into our brush and we're going to spatter with some white. We're going to use the heavy handled brush and get away from our project. can't see what that looks like right now because I've got to let it dry. So I'll just put that up there. I think it'll be fine. So then we need a little bit of those spatters over here. I think we could probably do just a little bit of yellow and white spatters on that moon. And then maybe we'll go ahead and do a little bit of the purple on our letters. And I think maybe some soft black on the bottoms. I'm pointed away from my yellow moon. Nice and messy, I love it. OK, 
Okay, next we're going to Bahama Blue. Yeah, I might have to go into a little bit of desert turquoise. And we're going to bring, let's flatten this out. Let me just see if I need to bring it in front of the hat or not. I don't think so. All right, so we'll get out our desert turquoise. And now we're going to snake it around through behind her arm. Snake it around the other side. And then ultimately, we'll snake it down underneath her. There she comes out there. And that broom maybe has collided, kind of, you know? Okay, then we'll go desert turquoise one more time. So what I'm doing is I'm sneaking up on the, um, on the colors. So I can't do too much desert turquoise all at the same time. So I have to kind of build my layers. And now we'll go into a little bit of smoky, dusty white. And one more time. And then we get out our spatters. over here first. Okay, then without killing ourselves, we're going to <laughs> spatter this way. around the table since I can't get at it any other way. Okay. Now I'll take a moment and I'll pick off these spatters that landed in her in her hair. And what I'll do is I'll just wet a brush and then just go scrub, scrub them out. Okay, now I'll figure out how to dry it. Next I'm going to use Purple Passion and I'm going to glitter the purple letters. And just put a single coat on them. Once again it'll glaze them and when it dries clear you'll have a lovely glittery effect. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of my um, Cad Yellow and I want to just kind of scumble and brighten just a little bit of this middle area. It's going to bring the color down out of the moon into these elements down here. And that just gives us a better center of interest through the hat. I like it. Okay, we can go into our red violet. And we can give kisses of red violet where we want them. So we could have a little bit on the edges of our hat. A little bit down in this corner right here of our hat. We can have a little bit on our yellow. yonder. And I think this up here might need a little kiss of that. Okay, maybe a little rounding in the 
this corner over here. Now it's time for witchy poo. What she made. So we'll get a red violet. And we've got some edges and corners and things that need to be a little bit addressed. So we'll go maybe up here. We need a little bit of red violet in her sleeve. Down yonder. Over by the shoes. Down the bottom. Maybe on the shoes. I like that. Kind of warms that area up just a little teeny bit and brings some color into it. Okay, I think her dress could use just a little. And of course our belt. Room could use just a little bit of color. Okay, and I'm thinking we might be there. All right, we can put a little bit of yellow in our stars down here, and we can go a little bit of yellow, light cad yellow, cad yellow on the belt just to muffle that and give it a little center of interest moment. You can bring a little bit down on the buckles, a little bit onto the broom. Bracelet. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, the hair comes in this bag of stuff. And this was just a little piece that I had pulled out. You're not gonna need a whole bunch of it, like maybe a quarter of a bag, half a bag, something like that. You can make it as full as you want to, obviously. So you're gonna cut some to get started with. And then you could leave it, you know, curly and black and like cute locks and stuff like that, but I want it a little witchier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to frizzify it and pull it apart. Okay. Okay. I like a kind of a. Don't want any ringlets on her hair. Not any perfect ringlets, anyway. No Shirley Temple witch. Reminds me of the pom-pom days when you had to rough up your pom-poms. Okay, you can clip some of the little locks so that they're separate. And then stretch it. Okay, and we don't want it too, too thick. I wonder if I can spread that out just a little bit. Yeah, it's a little bit thick. I'm going to take it and bulk them that out. Okay. And then you can pull some down and some over. You have good coverage. And what I've decided that I'm going to do is I'm going to put, um, I'm going to glue the hair down onto this top piece, okay? 
and then I'm going to glue the skirt on the top piece and then I'll slip the back piece through my um, through my rails on my um, project on my banner topper okay so what I need to do next is I need to varnish um, if you haven't glittered, go ahead and varnish everything. Roll your varnish on. Do one side, wait till it dries, flip it over, do the other side. And then um, and then do your glitter. Or you can do the varnish after. You, you can choose. It's either way. Um, and then I'm going to glue. And... Oh, I've got to go and make my hair glittery. So I'm spraying in some spray-on varnish instead of Tacket. And I'm using the gunmetal gray. All right, I want just a little bit of this trimmed off of the far side, so I'll just trim it to fit. That's perfect. Okay, and then I'm gonna get our, glue our hair on and stretch it and make sure we like where it's at. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and give her some spots for hair. Ah! Okay, the plan all along has been to go ahead and release this little flap up here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my knife and I'm going to carefully go along and cut it down to about here. Okay, I'll do just a little bit at a time. And look at how sharp, let's see, hang on, I'll get you out of here. It's still connected, there we go. How sharp that is, it got through the paint and everything all in one step. 